have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Join me in singing praises and hallelujah to our God most high. Join me in this Yuletide season. Let's sing to the goodness of the Lord, the born Savior of the whole world. This is Christmas season. Can we sing? I have seen the Lord goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord goodness, His mercy and compassion. I have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Let's sing Merry Christmas. Compliments of the season. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this. Ask a question broadcast. Can we say Christmas special? We have just two days more by Sunday. It will be Christmas Day. I welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. Christmas is smiling all over me. <laughs> I believe you too. Okay, I can see Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas from many of you. You are welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight. Okay, Afolabi Murakio. Merry Christmas are from Florida. How are you? Afolabi and the twin are my children there. God bless you. Please share, 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 share. Let's have great time with the Lord and with ourselves tonight. Type your name, the city and the country where you are joining us from and let us make it global. Please reach out to other people. Our YouTube is now functional. We are now on YouTube. So subscribe. You are welcome. Type your name. I can see people already joining the city and the country where you are joining us from tonight. I can see Ogunla Nolu Abome from Abekota. Okay. Ojo Omo. Merry Christmas, sir. All right. From Benin City. Okay. The city and the country. I like to see where you are joining us from. A lot of people are joining us, but they are not mentioning their city and their country. I want your city and your country. YouTube is live. Everyone, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please communicate that to others and make sure you are there. So we are live on the three network, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I can see Facebook growing. But not many people have to subscribe to YouTube. I like you to do that and also help me communicate it to other people. Chaka, Christy, Merry Christmas, Daddy from Kaduna State. All right. I'm putting up Christmas card tonight so that you can know that we are also in Christmas here. <laughs> How are you preparing for Christmas? It's going to be a wonderful Christmas for us this year. All right, Zeni Brooks joining from Delta State, Nigeria. Ira 
Ubo, Tina, Ikoria, from Benin City. Yes, yeah, that sounds like a Benin name. All right. Anu Oluwa Awoson Yashituman from Lagos. My daughter, God bless you. Please share, share, share. Precious Agyode from Abuja. Esther David. Merry Christmas to you, Daddy. Esther David from where you didn't type your city and your country. Everybody go live. We are back on YouTube. We are back on YouTube. But you need to resubscribe. Every one of you who are on YouTube before, to come back to YouTube, resubscribe. Even if you're on Facebook and Instagram, resubscribe to our YouTube and please uh, turn on notification. Turn on notification. That bell like symbol on your screen, click on it. So each time we are live, each time we are on, you will be notified. You are welcome. Elizabeth Uhoma from Abia. All right, Kolapo. Samuel from Ibadan. Wale Faye home. Merry Christmas, sir. Wale from where I like you to put your city and your country. Okay, YouTube is coming up now. YouTube is coming up now. Ademola Adenito. Okay, I love my father. Adenola. Let me let all your contacts know that we are back on YouTube. God bless you. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right. Okay, I have resubscribed that. Yes. Many people have not done so, and I want them to do so. We are back on YouTube, but you need to resubscribe. God bless you. Oduola Larry Rachel. God bless you from Ota. Ota. Awori Ajeku. It's nice to be back with you. Everybody share, share, share. Share, 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 share. I want the traffic to be high. I want the traffic because what is all for sharing today we bless everyone please call everyone on your contact let them know ask your question broadcast is on is live now three networks functional clear here i want you back on youtube everybody that is on youtube please subscribe to our youtube page it will bless you okay there are so many things this is an interactive uh, program Please get ready to make your contributions. Get ready to make your contributions. And then invite others, invite others, invite others, invite others. And then ask your questions. Don't suffer in silence. This is an interactive program. Unburden your heart. There is a solution for every confusion. Somebody knows what you are yet to know. And that which bothers you, answers. There's an answer somewhere. So we will be sharing deep in the scripture, deep in with experience, practical, applicable solutions. We'll be giving guidance, we'll be giving mentoring, we'll shed light on issues, and there is no no-go area. There is no no-go area. In any areas of human endeavor that you have issues, marriage, career, health, Raising your family, church, ministry, relating with people, whatever is the area. But make it, make sure you, you are asking genuine question, not hypothetic, genuine question. It has to do with you. And whatever question you ask, you are asking on behalf of so many other people. And the question and the clarity and the clarification and the counsel and the mentoring we will give we also be for hundreds of thousands of people, if only for that. Don't suffer in silence. A problem shared is a problem halved. Somebody has a solution to that confusion around you. Please embody your heart, ask all your questions, describe your situations, and that is what forms the basis of this interaction, of this interactive program. You are welcome. All right, let's hit the ground running. Let's get into the issues of the day. And we are going to start with the issues people sent in last Monday. And the questions you are asking today, we will answer the next broadcast, which is Monday. And what I will start, I'm starting with now, 
at the issue sent in last Monday. This broadcast is twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. And so that makes it easy. Nobody identifies, you know, it's like you are asking anonymously because these are issues that came last week, last Monday, and we are sharing today. And the issues you are bringing in today, we will share on Monday. So it is not connected to whoever is asking the questions. I don't. Let's get cracking. Daddy, please, you are free to make your contributions. And if my answer resonates with you, say so. Daddy, what is your take on Christmas celebration? Because some churches don't believe in it. What is your what is your take on Christmas celebration? Because some churches don't believe in it. I have said again and again, different churches have their different doctrines, different policies, different beliefs, different constitution. On the fundamental truths of the Bible, we are all united. Largely, we are one. Number one, Jesus died for the whole world, is the savior. God hates sin. Salvation through the name of Jesus is coming back the second time for rapture and taking away the saints. We should live a holy and pure life to God. We all basically believe in all those fundamental issues. But on issues, whether to celebrate Christmas or not, whether Christmas is in October or December or August, all such issues, whether wedding, we are to wear white gown or not, uh, whether you are to take wedding oath with ring or with Bible, all those non-fundamentals, different churches have their policies. And you can't change church doctrine. You only remain, I have said to us, there are two doctrines that a believer must subscribe to. There are two doctrines. The doctrines of the Bible as in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four synoptic gospels, and the epistles, the teachings of Jesus, and the practices of disciples. And then there is also the church constitution, the church structure, the church doctrine. So if you are going to be comfortable in the church, not only will you subscribe to Bible doctrine, you must also uphold their policies, their doctrines, their documents. And every organization needs documents. Every organization needs policies. Every organization needs constitution to uphold that uh, structure. Therefore, whichever a church, you want to want to join a church, look at what they believe. If you accept it, subscribe to it. If not, look for the one you believe in and you subscribe to. So on fundamental issues, we have no problem. But on issues that are not fundamental, every church does what she thinks, she believes in, and there is a that is what brought them to that level of beliefs. Therefore, uh, neither do we say it's right or not. Any child that does not believe in Christmas, that is their own. Those of us who believe, I mean, everybody believes that Jesus was born. But whether we are to celebrate that birth annually or on which day, remember when Jesus was alive, do you, can I shock you? The pictures of Jesus you see is not the real face of Jesus. Because when Jesus was here, there was no camera, there was no photograph. But everybody uses one thing or the other. But there is this fundamental belief. He was born, he lived, he suffered, he died for salvation of the whole world. There is no argument about that. So the date, the time, the season, whether it is to be celebrated or not, that is left for individual churches. All right. Okay, Daddy, I discovered I seldom use the restroom. Is it medically okay? He seldom used the restroom. Is it medically okay? I'm not a medical doctor, 
But I can tell you that does not look okay to me. It does not look medically okay. Something must be wrong with your digestive system. Uh, and there are doctors and nurses on this platform. Can you please help us? Somebody said, I seldom use the restroom. Is it medically okay? It also depends on your diet. It depends on how often and how heavy you eat. But there are doctors. Let me leave that for those that are medically inclined. Help this our person. I discovered that I seldom use the restroom. Is it medically okay? From the layman point of view, I feel it's not the best. But I know there will be medical explanations. From my own point of view, maybe your diet, how often, how heavy, what type, all right? But I think if the system is working well, you eat, it is digested, and uh, you excrete it out from time to time. Please, all uh, doctors and nurses, those of you that are good in that area, can you please uh, throw in your own understanding and advice. But I will say, see your medical doctor and explain this. Uh, perhaps, definitely, you will get a medical opinion and if there are uh, help they can offer you to normalize that system, I think the normal thing is that you eat, it is digested and it is passed out. I don't know how often someone should go to restroom to do number two. You know, there's number one, number two. <laughs> I think this one is concerned about number two, the excreta. So please help us. I'm trying to see if there are, if people are ready. Okay. Vera, Richard said, you are right, daddy. You are right, daddy. So please throw in your own uh, contributions. I'm trying to check the YouTube whether there are contributions to that effect more people need to come to youtube more people need to come to youtube okay Mayna adamu said more grace uh, Mayna said, i have subscribed sir everyone listening to me tonight please subscribe to our youtube page okay all right i can see a contribution there what is that contribution saying there Oh, I thought, okay. Cecilia Ogundele, it's urinating, it could be the high, it's urinating. It could be high sugar level. Well, that's a probability. We want somebody who can tell us what went wrong and if it is normal, but I think it's not the best. Okay. Sir, what can be responsible for sudden loss of weight despite that I don't have any ailment? Again, we have medical issues here tonight. Again, what can be responsible for sudden loss of weight despite that I don't have any ailment? Sometimes you cannot say you don't have any ailment until you are medically checked up. Every one of us, especially adults, we need to visit our doctor from time to time for medical checkup because there are certain ailments and afflictions that have no sign except you are medically tested and checked up. I believe so many things can be responsible for sudden loss of weight. Stress can be one. Sometimes people go through uh, a stressful time like when you stop in a divorce loss of job death of a loved ones these are all issues that bring man under stress so it could be a combination of things all right overreactive thyroid uh, rheumatoid arthritis diabetes depression it could be a combination of many things please talk to a medical officer and if there are medical officers here, please, there are two issues already thrown up now. Somebody is not visiting the restroom regularly and somebody is suffering a sudden loss of weight, even when 
He said, I have no ailment, but I have said, no one can say I have no ailment until you are medically tested, comprehensive medical checkup. All right. Is there anybody making contribution? Please, you people should ask that the spiritual question, not medical. <laughs> He's not a medical doctor. <laughs> that is Nkiru Chukwemeka. Thank you for delivering me <laughs> from them. I've told you I'm not a medical doctor, even though a pastor is a person who should know something about everything. But sometimes you don't know it deep enough to offer an authoritative counsel. So I cannot offer an authoritative counsel and directive in medical field because uh, that is not my field. But there are a lot of our medical brothers here and people like all of you too. Like I said, you should have your doctor visit your doctor. Once you are 40 years and above, you need regular medical checkup. God bless you. And if you are joining this broadcast for the first time, please let us know. Tell us if you are a first timer. Say, I'm a first timer here. I am joining this for the first time. And type your name and the city. And let any point, Global Family, welcome anyone joining us for the first time. Let Living Spring Global Family welcome anyone that is joining us for the first time. So if you are joining this broadcast, this is your first time. Please indicate, I am joining this for the first time. I am a first timer here. And then, please, let's welcome them. Let's welcome them. If this is your first time of joining this broadcast, kindly indicate by identifying as a first timer, stating your name, city, and country you are watching from in the comment bar. Share this broadcast with other people welcome them to this broadcast we want this broadcast to go viral we want this platform to go viral so let everyone get water therapy for someone that does not go to restroom regularly water therapy for someone that does not go to toilet regularly okay stella gold is already welcoming our first timers if you are a first timer here let us know if you are watching this for the first time, either through the Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, let us know, okay? YouTube is coming alive now. YouTube is coming alive. Everybody keep subscribing to our new YouTube page. It's a new YouTube page. Page YouTube are the real Femi Emmanuel. If you are on our YouTube before, before we had issues, please resubscribe. I want all of us that are on YouTube to be back, I want at least 40,000 subscribers this week. 40,000 subscribers to our YouTube page this week. YouTube are the real family manual. Do so and get others to do so. Okay? People are welcoming first timers. They are welcoming first timers. P. Ewaulua Temi, first timer. Welcome, Temi. All right. Titi Ola Peters, I'm a first timer watcher. Daddy, my name is Titi Lola. All of you on YouTube, help me welcome Titi Lola. All right. God bless you. Everyone indicate I'm going to be praying specially for all our first timers. All first timers on YouTube, please indicate. All first timers on Facebook, go ahead and let Tony Point uh, Global and Living Spring Global welcome them. Okay, let's go on. Daddy, how can one overcome the spirit of fear? Hmm. We come to issue of fear tonight. How can someone overcome the spirit of fear? You overcome the spirit of fear with the spirit of faith. Fear is a spirit. Faith is a force. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And I'm glad you said so. How can I overcome the spirit of fear? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. How then do you overcome fear? Faith. Faith displaces fear. Fear also displaces faith. So 
you are the referee. You are the decider. If you allow faith in your heart, fear will have no place. And how do you develop your faith? Feeding on the word of God. Faith grows by feeding on the word of God and by exercising the faith. What is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1. Substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 says, by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3, Hebrews 11 says, by true faith, we know that the worlds were framed together by the word of God. So that the things we see did not come from the things which do appear. So faith is developed, generated, and built through the word of God. What is faith? The word of God says so. I believe it and I walk in it. The word, because the word of God says so, I believe the word of God and I step out. I align my life with the word and I take action based on the word, even though I have not seen the things physically. That is what faith is all about. And what is fear? Fear is uh, uh, expectations. False expectations appearing real. Fear is an acronym. F-E-A-R. False expectations appearing real. False expectation appearing real. is not there, but a force, a spirit, throw it into your mind, and it's like it's real to you, and you are acting to type. You are fidgety, you are afraid, you can't sleep, you can't be coordinated anymore, because it is a falsehood, but you believe it. The same thing. Faith is a substance of things so far, evidence of things not seen. Can you see? Fear is faith in reverse. Fear is faith in reverse. You are exercising belief on what is not real because a spirit, something suggested it to you. Reject fear. And how do you reject fear? You use the word of God. Do what we call warfare prayers. All scriptures against fear and all scriptures that line up with faith. Start praying with them, confessing them, believing them fear will disappear all right don't forget how i describe fear tonight false expectations appearing real your fears will not happen you know that's our language here your fears will not happen because the enemy is suggesting it faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god good afternoon sir Long life for you, sir. Okay. Okay. First timers, you are welcome. People are welcoming first timers. I like you for that. I like you for that. Oh, please help us to welcome all first timers. All those that are joining this platform for the first time, you are welcome. You are welcome. YouTube. Okay. Uluwale, a Victor body. Okay, you have already subscribed to our YouTube and welcoming people. God bless you. Everybody, resubscribe. Uluwale, a Victor body. Watching live. State of the Living Spring. Oshubu, Ocean State. I thought your new governor has changed the name back. <laughs> I thought your new governor has changed your name from State of the Living Spring. <laughs> oh, is it that he changed you from the State of Ocean State? The state of Oshun to Oshun State, and yeah, I remember. He said he is changing it from the state of Oshun to Oshun State. A. Obamewa, Obamewa. God bless you. All right, another person here. He said, Daddy, what can one do to stop thinking? Hmm. What can one do to stop thinking? Okay, he said Oshun State, not the state of Oshun that Arabe Shola, Governor Arabe Shola brought there. What can one do to stop thinking? There is nothing anybody can do to stop thinking. The only one that is not thinking is a corpse or somebody who had gone berserk. Now, what you should be talking about is what type of thinking, what type of thoughts. Is it positive? Is it scriptural? Is it godly? I think what you are asking is that you just go into deep thinking 
that is not coordinated. Just thinking, zigzag, thinking all over. Some people can't sleep because, you know, thoughts will just be flooding their mind. Thoughts that are not, that really don't amount to anything. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. If I can get the Bible, I will read that for you. See what Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says. There is nothing you can do to stop thinking, but you can choose to think the right thoughts. I think we should be talking about the right thoughts, the positive thoughts, the godly thoughts. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. God did not leave us just like that. He taught us how to deploy our thought life. And he listed all the things we should fill our mind. He says renewing your mind with the word of God. So we can't stop thinking. But we must not think negative. Because when you think negative, you speak negative, And then negative things manifest around you. Remember our understanding of confession. Your confession leads to your possession. If the, what you see, what you hear, what you feel is not what you desire, don't say it. So, thoughts. There are two main gates by which issues come to our thought life, our eyes and our ears. What you see and what you hear. And if what you see is negative, if what, that's why you should not put your gaze Fix your eyes on negative things, negative pictures, negative videos, negative films, or hear wrong music, wrong conversation. Because those are the gates by which thoughts form in your heart. And any thought you permit and you nurse and you entertain for so long will affect your behavior. What you hear is what you believe. How you believe is how you behave. They are linked together. And God has so made it that if what you are looking at, or if what is thrown before you is not is negative, is unwholesome, and if what you are hearing is negative, is unwholesome, it does not take more than a split second to either close your eyes or tune off in your ears and say, that's not for my ears. Don't let anybody turn your life into a garbage dump and dump all kinds of things there. That's why you be careful what books you read, what film you watch, and what conversation, who, who you relate with. Don't let them pollute your mind. The mind drives the man. He says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. God has said it all. So, we can't stop thinking, but you can decide what to think about. You can decide the type of thoughts you allow. It is not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin to fall into temptation. Somebody can throw obscenity, throw negative things, naked women, terrible things before you, but the onus is on you whether to allow it to stay or not. You can close your eyes, you can shut your ears, and you can use the word of God to purify and to and to flush out all those garbage, garbages of thoughts that have been thrown all of us are faced we live in the world of sin we live in the presence of sin we hear sin they sing it they say it they display it but it is you that decide whether you want to allow it to stay by tuning off looking away and using the word of god to cleanse your system and your heart we can't stop thinking but we can determine what type of thinking we allow is that all right? Is anybody making contributions? Mercy P say, you are very right, daddy. Okay, I can see questions already being asked. Daddy, I am married for eight years without a child. And doctor said, I have hormonal imbalance. Okay, we are going to answer those ones next week. But the ones we are talking now, please make contribution if you have any. If you have any so we can't stop thinking but you must purify the kind of things you think about you must guard your mind 
and then you must fill your mind with scriptures. He said, let the word of God grow in you richly. You must fill your mind. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not, not be ashamed. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord must not depart from your mouth. You must meditate. Ha! It is in your mind you meditate. You turn it over and over. And I'll show you in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 now. The kind of things God said we should think about. Anything of good report, godly thing, positive thing, faith things. That is what you should engage your mind to think about. And there is no stage we reach in spirituality that the enemy does not come to throw negative things in our heart. Now, can I say this? When we read in the Bible that Jesus was in the wilderness and the tempter went to him and tempted him, three main tempt temptation. If you are a child of God, turn this stone into food. If you are a child of God, jump from the pinnacle. If you are a child of God, you know, command this to be this. And, and Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. It was not that Satan went to him physically with two horns, ugly teeth, one long tail. No, it was in his mind. Our mind is the hottest battlefield. The devil wants to have our mind. The devil wants to have your mind. The devil wants to have your mind. If he can take hold of your mind, he will turn your life, he will drive your life. The mind drives the man. It is where the mind goes that the body follows. Guard your mind. Don't allow garbage. Don't allow evil. All those nonsense picture and story and books and songs and film. No. Those things will pollute you and then give you a wrong mindset. I think I've said enough. Are you being blessed? Okay. She says, you are 200% right, sir. 200% <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, everybody work on your mind. Don't let the enemy throw garbage in your mind. Your mind determines you. Jesus Christ said, it is not what we take in that pollute a man, but what comes from inside of a man. And what comes from your inside is determined by what the enemy throws into your thought life. Guard your thought life. Don't think evil, so you don't do evil. It comes, you throw it away. God bless you. Oh, are you getting something? Are you getting something? Randa Roda said, yes, so. I think we tell Daniel, mind drives man. Yes. Do you know, we don't see with our eyes, we see with our mind. Where the mind goes, the body follows. The body follows. So please guard your mind, everyone. And the best way to guard your mind is to fill it with the word of God. So that at any time T, no matter what shows up, there are scriptures. It's just like Google or, 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 or browsing. No matter what comes up, the Holy Ghost browsed in your mind and bring the appropriate scripture to face it. But that is when you have loaded your mind with scriptures. The mind of a man works like computer, garbage in, garbage out. It is what you feed into the computer that the computer brings out when you press the right button. So if you don't feed your mind with the word of God, there is nothing the Holy Ghost will bring out even when you keep browsing because there is nothing there. So every one of us must know the word of God and study, not just read it, study, meditate, memorize. All right. All right. David said, your word have I kept in my heart that I will not sin against you. Wow, that is apt. That is correct. Keep the word of God in your heart. It will keep you away from sin. Somebody said, the word of God will keep you away from sinning or sinning will keep you away from the word of God. Can you see? That's how it works. So every one of us, don't say I'm lazy. I don't have time. My job doesn't allow me to know the word. No, no, no. You just have to find time to read, to study, to commit it to heart, and to work on the world. Sir, my job is stressing me. No time to rest. What should I do? Please make your contribution. Somebody is saying here, my job is stressing me. No time to rest. What should I do? 
I'm also sure no time to serve God. <laughs> I just spoke about studying the word of God now, committing it into our mind. No time to study the word of God. Now, if your job is this stressful, look for another job. And if you are a manager or a senior worker, I'm sure you probably you are not a senior worker there. If you are a senior worker, or if you are the job owner, then you talk about delegating duties so that you remove stress. Stress can kill. And any job that is stressing you and you are feeling the stress and you are complaining this much, perhaps it is not your field. You are not working along your passion. When you work on your passion, it's less stressful. I have a very heavy shadow, for instance. My schedule is very heavy. I'm either traveling, preparing to preach, preaching, counseling, sit on meeting upon meeting, study the word of God, praying and waiting on the Lord. My job is very, very tight. But I enjoy it because it's my passion. I enjoy it because it's my passion. So many people are working against passion. They are working against their potentials. They have not discovered their potentials and developed it. If you are doing what excites you, if your job excites you, if your job tickles you, if your job inspires you, it, there will be less stress because you, you are, there's a hormone in you that, that is triggered off because that is what God created you to do. Is your passion but a lot of people are just struggling with what they do because what they do was not what god created them to do they didn't know about potential discovery potential development and potential deployment so you might need to add more value to yourself and build up and get to a level where you can delegate duties but you can't do that as a junior staff you can't do that as a junior staff so up your game Add value to yourself, do more training, discover your passion, walk along your passion, you will be super excited. Discover yourself and be your own boss. Why some that's why some people are poor, okay? Go and read my book, why people are poor. Emmanuel Econ, please change that type of job. Change that type of job. Patients are with you about, please talk to your boss or change your job. Your mental health is very important. Kendi Ojo, you must set out a day like God to rest, sir, to rest. So, I think uh, the bottom line is that everybody should build up yourself, build your career, ultimately be your own boss so that you can arrange yourself, you can have time to rest, you can enjoy what you do uh, and then delegate much of the job to other people so that the job can go on without anybody being stressed out. A lot of the uh, Contributions are coming. Please look at them. A lot of contributions are coming. Please check them and look at them. Share, 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 share. I want a higher traffic tonight. Please share, share, share. Share, 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 share. Can you do just say you hit, you hit it, sir, by delegating duties. Make sure you get another job before you leave, leaving the old ones. <laughs> if your job, Olishola Lawrence, if your job is stressful, try to prioritize your schedule and learn to say no and add more values to yourself, okay? Okay. Are you getting something out of this? Are you being blessed? I surely want a higher traffic tonight on YouTube and on Instagram. 
I surely want a higher traffic. Share, 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 share. All of you keep sharing, keep sharing. Invite more people. Keep sharing. Send our links to all your friends. I want everybody to know that we are back on YouTube. And I want us to grow back and grow beyond where we were before we have issues. So everybody do that and do that for God. Daddy, how do I relate with a friend I have lost contact with for years who suddenly resurfaced? How do I relate with a friend I have lost contact with for years who suddenly resurfaced? There are some of you watching and listening who had that experience before. Can you share your experience with us? But from my own side here, I will say caution. Caution, caution. A friend you have not seen for a lifetime, a long time, that suddenly resurfaced, be careful. Treat him like you would treat a stranger. Because you don't know what the years of, of separation had built into that person. In fact, if you have not seen a person for one year, it's long enough for you to be cautious. People change a lot. You don't know which relationship they have picked up. You don't know what attitude they have developed. You don't know what way of life they have developed. You don't know what they are into. And so treat such a person with suspicion, with wisdom, until you get to know them and what they stand for. A year is too long. Not to talk about somebody you have not, you have lost contact with for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years. They might have become somebody totally different, gone into several things, gone into certain relationship, and don't let somebody bring trouble to you before you can be become close as you used to be. You need time to know what the person has become because said by their food. You shall know them. Don't say, oh, my friend, somebody you have not seen for years is still a friend, but with caution, with caution, so that you don't get yourself into trouble. Olushola Lores, please be careful with such friend. He or she might have changed from the person you used to know. Yes. Can they, Ojo, we should know what both of you talk about do you share the same vision and thought and idea? If your thoughts and mind still align, then you can work together. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Then it takes time to know that. Somebody you have not seen for a while, somebody you have not seen for a long time, like you said here, it will take time for you to know whether they are the person you used to know, their thought pattern, their ideas, their relationship, their outlook to life, their values. Are those values you know with him or her still there or it has changed people change a lot environment change people circumstances change people other people change people so be careful that uh, uh, <laughs> oh, on, no. said, behavior is like pregnancy it can hide it for long <laughs> it can hide it for long juliet edubo Keep watch and study the person for a while. Yes. Patience are where you are. You pick up conversation gradually and study the person before you get closer. I think we are all saying the same thing tonight. Be careful. A lot of people had gotten themselves into trouble, serious trouble, gotten implicated in what they know, hardly know anything about, just because a friend. Even at airport, you are told never to take an item or a luggage or a baggage for anybody, no matter how close they are, except they will uh, open it for you to see. In fact, you should be careful. A lot of people are in prisons today, some sentenced to death, some even killed for drug pushing for what they know nothing about. Please help me deliver this to somebody in Dubai, somebody in London, somebody, please. Wherever you have not met for a long time, caution and caution. 
Sir, what should I do in a situation where my prayers are not answered and I am barren of testimony? Hmm. What do I do, should I do in a situation where my prayers are not answered and I'm barren of testimony? There are many people watching me tonight who are going through similar experiences. Your prayer seems not to be answered. You prayed and prayed, you fasted and fasted. No change. And I've given you testimony here before that I have not prayed a prayer that God did not answer. There is no prayer I pray to God that God did not answer. And there are those that are saying, I pray to God, God has not answered. In fact, I answered the question. Those of you that will listen to Tony Point tomorrow morning, there was a question I answered today. He said, what have we done against God that God has forgotten us? It's like God has forgotten us. What did we do to God? And God forgets none. It is like this. I am in situations, my prayers are not answered. I am barren of testimonies. That describes so many people, even many of you that are watching me. So I want you to listen very, very carefully. The Bible says, God's ears are not deaf, that they cannot hear us. His hands are not shortened, that he cannot deliver us. But our iniquity has separated between us and God. And many times it's not just iniquity, it is because we are not praying in line. James, let me read another scripture to you. I don't even know what, how much time we have now. How much time do we have there? Somebody with time there, help me. We are to close by 10.40 Nigeria time. So how much time do we have left? James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Verse 3. He said, You ask and you receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. That's God's word for you. One of the reasons, 23 minutes, God bless you. Somebody said, Daddy, don't you have clock? I don't have a my wristwatch. Bafuka is <laughs> dead. <laughs> now, 23 minutes, so we'll be faster. Now, look at that. He said, the reason you ask and you don't get is that you ask amiss. You didn't ask rightly. You are asking to consume it on your lust, on your greed. And God will not answer that. God will not answer prayers for our greed. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches in greed, not all your greed. You ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss. How does a person ask amiss? I have explained this again and again. Why is it that I can say there is no prayers I have prayed that God did not answer? And people are saying, I have prayed and prayed, no answer. What is the difference? I have said this again and again. I don't ask for a thing. And please don't ask God for a thing until you have situated that thing in the word of God. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. Not over your greed, not over your ambition, not over your idiosyncrasies, not over what you think you like. God answers according to his word. I watch over my word. Therefore, whatever you are asking God for, make sure you can identify it in the word. That is why we, in the warfare prayer strategies, we say Google. Before the advent of uh, internet, we will say cons consult concordance. Locate Bible verses on which that your desire can stand upon. God does not give us miracle to satisfy our greed. No. Or our fantasy. No. Let that which you are asking be identified with his word. Number two. Let what you are asking God to do for you line up with his purpose for your life. We are purposeful creatures. Every one of us came as a purpose from God to fulfill a particular mission. 
And that was what we are saying the other time. Discover your potentials, develop it, know your passion, and work along that passion. They are close. Have you discovered purpose? I recommend a book to you the other time by Rick Warren, A Purpose Driven Life. I say it again, everyone, get a copy of that book by Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life. The purpose, that's the title, is online, is on soft copy or hard copy, hard copy preferably, order for it. The, a lot, 90% of human beings are living out of their purpose. They don't know purpose, they are just living. And when purpose is lost, abuse is inevitable. What you are asking God to do for you, does it line with God's purpose for your life? What is purpose? Purpose is what God sent you to this world to accomplish. There is no, none of us is a biological mistake. Nobody just happened. You first existed as a purpose in the mind of God before he put you in your mother's womb. Galatians chapter 1 verse 5. Galatians chapter 1 verse 5. Bible is talking about purpose there. You first existed as a purpose in the mind of God before he sent you here. So if what he sent you to accomplish here or not, he said to Jeremiah, sorry, it's not Galatians, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Jeremiah 1 5, before I formed thee, I knew you. And before I put you in your mother's womb, I have ordained you, I have separated you, a prophet to the nation of what he sent you to do. A lot of people don't know their purpose on earth. So, look inward. What is my purpose? And purpose here, can I discover purpose? Your potentials are pointers to your purpose. There are things God wired you. You are packaged, you are wired in a way to fulfill a mission. Discover it. And if you are running your purpose, your purpose is to fulfill God's mission for you. So, if what you are asking line up with your purpose which means it lines up with what god wants you to do how will god not answer i don't ask for a thing until i situate it in the word of god i don't ask for anything except that which line up with my purpose and my purpose is what god sent me here to do so if i am running errand for god all of us are sent here by god to run errand for him to add color to life to add value to life either as an academician a farmer, a trader, a pastor, a teacher, find out what he called you to do. And if what he sent you to do, which you have discovered, which you have trained for, is what you are doing, when you ask God for help in that area, he gives you. When you ask God for what is in the scripture concerning you, and what relates to the purpose he sent you, it's like you sending your boy or your girl to accomplish a task. You will give him or her what he needed to accomplish that task. If you need to go on transportation, take a flight ticket, you will buy the ticket for flight ticket, give him a car or a driver, give him the money. So if what God sent you to do in this world is what you are doing, when you ask him for help in that area, it comes at once. I have never asked God for a thing that I was denied because I am not going to ask for anything for greed. I'm not going to ask for anything to compete with others. I'm not going to ask God for anything just to show off that I have it. I can do it. No. So, one of the reasons why people ask, and it's like prayer is not answer, is that God is not are talking, is because you are asking a miss. Well, that's a, I think I need to write a book on that. Prayers that God answers. Prayers that God answers. I think I need to write a book on that. And why some prayers are not answered. Because they are not going to fulfill God's purpose for you. They don't line up with the word of God. You are asking it for your lust. And God is not going to answer that kind of prayers. Daddy, is harvest thanksgiving biblical? Is harvest thanksgiving biblical? Again? Like what are the issue we have treated before? Why some people are not celebrating Christmas? And I told you, different churches have their practices, have their beliefs. So in churches where they do harvest season, they have harvest Thanksgiving. 
It's not biblical. It's not unbiblical. If that is their own means, and I have been in such a church before. I grew up, in fact, in the church where I grew up, one of the Orthodox churches. Harvest Thanksgiving is a major celebration of the year. And what was the prime, the main purpose for Harvest Thanksgiving is to gather money. That's why you hear bazaar. After people are brought in, they were doing bazaar. It goes like you are, like you are, like you are doing a auction. It's like auction. It's going for this, and it is all aimed at gathering money for the church. But we know better. We know better. We don't raise money that way. Selling bazaar in the church, Jesus Christ took a cordial and sent them out. You turn my father's house into a den of thieves, buying and selling. But if that is what some churches know, if that is the level of their knowledge to gather money, because harvest Thanksgiving, people will bring things, farm produce, bring goods, bring all their things, and gather it. And sometimes it is resold to make money, or maybe they share it. If that is the practice of the church, who are we to condemn them? But I know that the best way to grow money, I teach my pastor mentees, the best way to raise money for ministry is to develop your people, is to teach them the word, assist them, empower them, stand by them to grow their financial life, to grow their career. And when they grow their career, grow their financial life, and they have, they will give because you have taught them. I am not sent to raise money. I keep saying that. I am sent to raise destinies, to raise lives, to raise career people, to raise great homes, great husbands, great mothers, to raise people who will discover their purpose in life, stand in that purpose, be fulfilled. They will, on their own volition, showing gratitude to the God that has helped them, put money in kingdom work. You will hear me say, we don't force anybody to give. You will hear me saying, look, I'm not talking about tithe and offering because the church is broke. God is never broke. But we say that because that is the law of life, the law of seed and harvest. And you will hear me tell, say things like, we can't buy God's miracle. We are not paying for his blessings. So if we ask people to pay their tithe and to give sacrificially, it is not to buy God's miracle or to bribe God for his blessings. No, who are we? But it is fulfilling the law of life, the law of God, and the law of man, that without planting, there can be no reaping. Without giving, God has put receiving into giving. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. So when we teach about giving, it's like we are teaching about salvation. We are teaking about righteousness. We are teaking about holiness. We are teaching about how to live, developing godly character, the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. It is the same line. Teaching people what it means to sow seed so that harvest can come. So, uh, harvest Thanksgiving service, if that is the practice in a church, God bless them. But there are some of us who have outgrown that, that we know that it is when you develop the Christian, and it takes time. Pastoring is parenting. All those who say, I love my pastor to me all over the world, many of you that are my sons, I can see you, many of you will testify to it. Why are you celebrating your pastor? Why do you love me? Why do you take to what I say? Because you have watched me over the years. My life has impacted you. I have brought value to your life. I have used my life as example. I have stood with you. I have prayed with you. I have taught you the principles of life. And many of you have connected to it and you found it so. I mean, I wrote a book, Why People Are Poor, and the way out of it. You read this book, you listen to me, you do what I ask you to do, and your business, your enterprise, your platform, your investment begin to grow. How will you not give to God naturally? It doesn't happen in a day. And ditto for all over them. I wrote a book on the law of success, teaching people how to succeed in their career, how to develop themselves, connect to the industry, and all the laws, all the things they need to know to be able to make a success out of their lives. 
the law of self-discovery, I've said that tonight, the law of focus, the law of self-development, the law of diligence, the law of consistency. I have been on turning point with Femi Manning for 33 years, every day. The law of consistency, the law of mentorship, the law of prudence and frugality, the law of planning, the law of customer client satisfaction. When you teach people practical principles of life, and it's like parenting, like I said, and they grow with it, and they find it so, and they are blessed, and they are happy. Their platform is growing. Their investment is growing. Money is no longer a problem. They will naturally themselves give. It takes time to do. Many of us are in our reward season. I am in my reward season. The Bible says God is a rewarder of those who diligently serve them. When you have labored, I have been on these things for 30 something years, imparting lives, helping people, financing them, send some of them to school, bail them out. I go to prison houses to visit my members. If they commit them to prison, I go with them to police station. I bail them out. I go to school, fight with, uh, uh, I mean, get into those who have to give them accommodation, support them in their needs. Over the years, pastoring is parenting. And when those children grow, they pay back. Church members pay back. Just like our natural children pay back. So you to mentor people. And you discover that the people whose life you have touched will touch you back. In pastoral work, impact determines welfare. And when you have made impact, the people that your life has blessed will not forget you when they get up. So, how did I get into that one now? Okay, I got into that when I was talking about Harvest Thanksgiving. Is it biblical? So it depends on the understanding of that church, the beliefs on that church, and who are we to query the doctrine and the belief of any church. What are you saying? Oh, I will say, well said, sir. Joke Aminu, I am connected with you, sir. My life has changed. Oh, sir, election, yes, sir. And you definitely deserve it, sir. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody bought this car for me today. <laughs> Somebody bought this for me today. <laughs> My God. And I said, I'm going to wear this tonight to shakara all of you. <laughs> oh, thank God for all of you. Sheyo Yediro, connecting to you is a great blessing, sir. Okay, God bless you. Mercy P, thanks very much, sir, for your truthful teachings. Runke Olabode, Daddy, I have a question, sir. Please ask your question. God bless you. Patience, I worry about you. are laughing because I said somebody bought this to me. And I asked, I said, how much did you buy this? It says 1,500 naira. Bought it for Daddy. Bought it for Daddy. <laughs> and I said, this is what I will wear tonight. And let people know that. I am already celebrating Christmas. Goshen say, well said, sir. Omolara Dirogba, you are a great father. Omolara, we are missing you. We are missing you. How are my people in Canada? God bless you. Okay, patient said, it looks nice on you. Let's close. Please, let me pray for you. Touch where you have aches and pain for healing. Bring out those things in your hand. For me to bless for you, your water bottle, your anointing oil, any item that connect to your need. Remember, tomorrow morning is our uh, communion service online. Listen to me on turning point. Join us on communion. Father, I pray for your children. I bless them. I pronounce you blessed. Wherever you are hurting, the power of God will get in there. The grace of God comes on you. The glory of God envelope you. You will end this year strong. We still have some few days. Before the end of the year, God will bless you. Every day remaining this year, you will be compensated. Where you have losses, what God has done for you, making you happy will grow. Where you are still struggling, there will be intervention. You are blessed. You are lifted. God bless you. Compliments of the season. I love you. Have a wonderful, peaceful night rest. Those of us that are at night here, different people are still coming to watch later. God bless you. I love you. Have a good night. We are shutting down. Remember, our YouTube is on now. Connect, resubscribe to our YouTube. I want to see all of you back to YouTube. God bless you.